Stuttgart, West Germany, an ancient city that traces its origin back to the 10th century. And while it has retained much of its old world charm, it has become cosmopolitan, a center of industry, and home for nearly one million people. Today, Stuttgart extends its hand in friendship, serving as host for the World Gymnastics Championships. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Adamley and working with us our gymnastics star Kathy Rigby McCoy and today the women's all-around title is on the line and Kathy like so many times it seems the champion should come from either the Soviet Union or Romania. And I think Romania's Danielle Silivac is especially hungry for this title. She's come so close to this world in Olympic gold, and each time it has eluded her. At the 88 Olympics, she took second to Soviet gymnast Elena Shishinova in one of the greatest all-around battles in gymnastic history. At the European Championships this spring, she met with the same fate. In the final event, Svetlana Boganskaya, her rival today, scored a perfect 10 to take it away again. There is also a very strong American presence here in Stuttgart, that presence led by the dynamic Brandy Johnson. And Brandy has won every meet since the Seoul Olympics. She's currently ranked fourth in the world, and today will be a great opportunity to cement her reputation. Well, also working with us, the newest member of ABC Sports Broadcasting Team, Olympic gymnastics champion in 1984, Bart Connor. And there's another interesting story here in Stuttgart that's developing, Bart, and perhaps you can explain that. Well, there's a controversial new rule this year, which is making the competition very exciting, certainly, but at the same time, it's totally at the expense of the world's best gymnasts. Under the new rules, no scores carry over from the preliminary rounds, which means that a gymnast who had a terrific lead coming into this session, that lead gets wiped out. On the other hand, it's a terrific advantage for someone like Brandy Johnson. She had a rough time in the preliminaries. Under the new rules, she has as good a chance of winning a medal as anyone. And the gymnasts assembled here in West Germany, so close in talent that the title may be decided by hundreds of a point. Now the women, of course, compete in four different events, and the all-around title will go to the gymnast with the highest combined score. This is 16-year-old Svetlana Boganskaya of the Soviet Union in the uneven bars. And those long arms and legs you would think would be a detriment, but she really swings well, high on her release moves, and really uses her height to an advantage. She just streamlines everything. Coming up is one of the most difficult dismounts in the competition. Full in, double back, great exercise. Well, Kathy, as you mentioned, those long lines certainly are very beautiful on the bars. Look at the position on this straddled toe on, toe off. Now here comes the full twisting double. It's a double backflip with a full twist in the middle, and she pulls it all the way around. And Boganskaya, like she has so many times before, sets a very high standard for others to shoot for. Her score, 9.95. Next up, America's Brandy Johnson competing in the vault in the all-around competition. Each gymnast is given two vaults, but they only score the best one. Brandy had a 9.9 .9 in her first vault. And a great place to begin since it is one of her best events. Brandy was fifth in this event at the uh, Olympic Games in Seoul, Korea, and she picks up where she left off, getting a helping hand from her coach, Kevin Brown. The trickiest part of this vault is keeping good form, as Brandy does, and look at the height and the position in the air. And for Brandy, the second time is the charm in the vault. Not perfection in the eyes of the judges, but pretty close, 9.937. Sports is brought to you by the American Express Card. Membership has its privileges. Buy Kentucky Fried Chicken. Taste our best at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Buy Extra Strength Tylenol, the pain reliever hospital is used most. And buy new Dandruff Control Pert Plus. Dandruff Shampoo Plus Complete Conditioner in One. Ready to compete in the floor exercise, Romania's Daniela Silovas. And let's go back to the Olympic Games in 1988, Seoul, Korea, where Silovas and Elena Shishinova, the Soviet Union, engaged in perhaps one of the great all-around battles in Olympic history. Now, Silovas held a slim lead entering the last rotation, but after scoring a 9.95 in her vault, it was out of her hands. Shishinova, well, she scored a perfect 10 to claim the gold medal by the slimmest of margins. And Daniela? Well, she could only look on in dismay. Shishinova has since retired, so here at the World Championships, Daniela is at center stage again, hoping to win that all-around title that has eluded her.
And even though Danielle has had trouble in the all around, she is past world and Olympic champion on the floor exercise. Wonderful combination tumbling run there. Now the judges are placing much more emphasis on dance and rhythm. They want the gymnast to maintain that artistry while still performing all those difficult moves. Anna first became interested in gymnastics when she was six years old watching who else? Nadia Komenich. And Daniela will need to muster up an awful lot of strength for this double back tumbling run. A little overturned, but the judges won't take off much. And she should be happy with that exercise. This is a terrific dismount for Silly Vosh. It's a tuck double back, tremendous reach. Now keep in mind, this is her first event of four. She seems to have a little more energy than she planned for. Judging by the smile on her face, she is off to a very good start. She's waiting for a score, and there it is, 9.975. Next up from the United States, 17-year-old Sandy Woolsey in the vault. And Sandy's really been the Cinderella story of these world championships. She has performed beyond everyone's expectations. And that landing shows you just how solid she's been. She has only competed three other times in international competition. And this Yurchenko vault was terrific. A round off onto the board. Notice the position in the air. And look at her spot that landing. Boom. Sandy making a statement for the American team. Hey, we've got more guns than just Brandy Johnson and her score, 9.95. This is Gabriela Podorak of Romania, 16 years old, on the balance beam. And the balance beam consistently remains the Achilles heel for so many gymnasts, but as Olympic bronze medalist, Gabrielle's confidence level should be higher than most as her first event. Has tremendous difficulty, and most of all, is combined with this elegant dance and flexibility. Now here's an impressive move. Watch this, handstand. One, two, Two and three quarters times around. You wonder if she's dizzy when she comes up. Of course, the judges are placing more emphasis on dance on the balance beam as well as the floor exercise. You'll notice her rhythm is very good, too. She's aggressive and moves with quite a bit of freedom. And here's her dismount. You're really focusing at this point. You don't get much better than that. Gabriela Podorak of Romania, you mentioned she won a bronze medal at the Olympic Games in this event. She tied American Phoebe Mills. And this is a very difficult dismount combination. Three elements back to back to back. And for the moment here in the first rotation, Gabriela Podorak takes the lead, 9.987. This is Christina Bontes. Talk about depth. She, too, another star for Romania. And watch this opening tumbling run. A double layout, the most difficult move on the floor exercise. You're in for a real treat. She is a ball of energy on this event. Another incredibly impressive tumbling run. Oh. So tough to do all of that and then change directions.
And here's your last crumbling run. An extraordinary power coming from those tiny legs. What an exciting tumbler, Kathy. You know, we talked about the fact that the judges are requiring a higher level of dance at this competition. Therefore, I think some of the tumbling level is down. But not from this young lady. Look at this tough double back, and this comes at the end of a very difficult combination. And there it is, the perfect 10. The only one recorded here in the first rotation. And this coming from a young lady who is just 15 years old, stands only 4 feet 6 inches tall, and weighs just 68 pounds. So perhaps the Romanians have another star on their horizon. What they do have is a stranglehold on the top three places after the first rotation. Sandy Woolsey of the USA is fifth, Brandy Johnson seventh. Silavash is up in the vault. Interestingly enough, this is the only event she has not won a world or Olympic title in. Her vault is very good, but she doesn't seem to have the explosive power of a Boganskaya or a Brandy Johnson. She's clean, but she just can't seem to get the height to give her the 10 she wants. And waiting in the wings is Brandy Johnson in seventh place after the first rotation. After spending six months away from home to train with Bella Caroli in Houston, Texas before the Olympics, Brandy is back home again in Florida, and our Donna Deverona had a chance to visit with her. Brandy Johnson, she's come a long way since she was six years old and a member of the Tallahassee Tumbling Tots. And I'm sure Brandy's putting a lot of pressure on herself to perform well here since she did fall in the preliminary competition on this event. Incidentally, Daniela Silovash recorded a 9.925 in the vault. The tendency when you have fallen in a preliminary competition is to hold back so it doesn't happen again, but you can't do that, otherwise your timing is off. Obviously, she didn't succumb to the nerves. Great routine. A hug from Kevin Brown and one from Sandy Woolsey. Brandy is really at her best when she's very aggressive. After that giant full turn, watch the landing position on this tuck double. He has perfect form and she lands straight up and down. And a score of 9.925 for Brandy Johnson. On deck from the Soviet Union, Olga Strasheva. She was fourth after the first rotation. She's competing in her first world championships, but she was third in the all-around in the European championships last year in Brussels. And Olga's really a powerful gymnast, but she's had her share of injuries, and if any event will test the body, it's vault. That was a very clean vault, but Kathy, as you mentioned, watch the position on the landing. Her right foot shoots out. She's obviously favoring that ankle. And despite the minor flaw, Olga receives a mark of 9.962. This is Svetlana Boganskaya on the balance wheel. And she really starts out with a bang. It's a very gutsy move to begin with a front flip. You're telling the judges, here I am. Kathy, away from the gym, Svetlana is very quiet, very reserved. But when she competes, she has an abundance of tenacity and inner drive. Well, some say that drive stems from a personal tragedy that took place three days after the Seoul Olympics when her coach suddenly died under mysterious circumstances. Soviet officials have refused to comment, but insiders say the death was a suicide. In any event, the loss of her coach has had a tremendous impact on Svetlana. so light on her feet. Here's her dismount. Double back, perfect landing. And now perhaps Svetlana can finally relax and let go a smile.
Now, this is the pass where she had trouble in the preliminaries and fell off. If you can believe, she's actually playing it safe when she under-rotates the second layout back. One slight bobble, but no fall. Bogan Sky was tied for fifth after the first rotation, but that mark of 9.95 will move her up. So after two rotations, Olga Strasheva with the lead. Svetlana Boganskaya is now tied for second. And we'll return later with more of the World Gymnastics Championship. We're back with more of the World Gymnastics Championships from Stuttgart, West Germany, a city that is as rural as it is industrial. And while it is the world headquarters for Mercedes, natural horsepower has not been forgotten. Inside the arena, the women have completed two rotations in the all-around competition. Olga Strasheva has the lead. Silovash and Boganskaya tied for second. Randy Johnson is sixth. Next up in the vault, 16-year-old Wendy Bruce from the USA. And Wendy has surprised many with her consistent performances here. She trains with Brandy Johnson, and it's always better to train with someone who is at least your equal. It gives you that competitive edge. Watch what Wendy does on the landing of this vault. Her right foot slides behind her left foot, trying to camouflage the fact that it wasn't quite a perfect landing. Good technique. Wendy's score, 9.912. Next up, Brandy Johnson, a gymnast who leaves nothing to chance. Well, I have a lucky $2 bill that I take everywhere with me. Well, it's in my gym bag. It goes to the gym with me. And now I have a lucky coin from France, and I won from Germany, too. It's usually my birthday that I keep with me. Are you superstitious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Talent and hard work are important, but it doesn't hurt to have a few good luck charms. This is Brandy on the balance beam. And this was also an event where Brandy had some problem in the preliminary. She begins with a relatively simple mount, but she looks as if she's working with confidence already. Great height on her leaps. In fact, she gets some of the, the best elevation in the competition on all her moves. Brandy was in sixth place after the second rotation. One of the requirements for the gymnast on the balance beam is a dance acrobatic combination. Now, most do relatively simple moves to fulfill this requirement. Brandy does this full turn right into a gainer layout, and she does it very well. Kathy, what about the difficulty in this routine? Well, I think you'll get an example of it right here. Watch this front flip. Brandy has the difficulty plus some. Whoops. You see that so often. The gymnast makes the most difficult moves, and then they slip up on the relatively simple ones. A little hop there on the dismount, but a good exercise. Now it'll be interesting to see how the judges view that minor flaw. It's too bad she had a couple of little bobbles because watch this pass. Back handspring, back handspring layout, and look at how high she lands that layout. That's power. Brandy has scored 9.887, and temporarily she has moved into third place, but remember... The big guns are still to come. Daniela Silovash of Romania and this woman, Svetlana Boganskaya. Now let's go back to last year, the European Championships. In the final rotation, Svetlana needed a perfect 10 in the floor exercise to win the all-around title. And with a flawless performance, that's exactly what she got. Winning the first major all-around title of her career and beating Daniela Silovash by the narrowest of margins. And now Svetlana has her eyes set on a world title in the floor exercise. And interestingly enough, this has been somewhat of a controversial routine. Some of the judges feel it's too avant-garde. But of course, as in the European Championship, her risk was well taken when she scored a perfect 10. As usual, the Soviets are the trendsetters. They really focus on the drama and the total presentation. And what's 
so nice is her transitions from one movement to another are so good. What drama. <laughs> I'd say that was fairly sensational. Svetlana Volgonskaya of the Soviet Union. You know where she really gets her maximum points is from showing perfect technique. Although this isn't the most difficult run, this double full is done perfectly. And there, <laughs> she's done it again. A perfect 10 at the European Championships and a perfect 10 here at the World Championships in the floor exercise. And deja vu for Daniela Silovash. She'll need a perfect 10 to match Svetlana. But this is Natalia Lasheneva of the Soviet Union in the vault, currently tied for sixth place with Brandy Johnson after two rotations. What makes this vault so terrific is watch how she thrusts her arms to the side when she's completed it, just to show off how easy it is for her to do. And Natalia says, anything you can do, Svetlana, I can do just as well. Different apparatus, but same results. A perfect 10. And now it's Daniela's turn on the uneven bar. And she must stay in the hunt with Boganskaya. She's very capable of 10s on this event. This is one of her best events. In fact, she's the gold medalist from the Olympics. Good straight arms, right to a handstand. Here's her dismount. Slight break in the legs there, but all in all, a very good exercise. Now, although Daniela doesn't do the most outrageous release move, where she gets her points is from this combination here. Stalled her pirouette, right to the Delchev. Great combination work. Remember, Daniela needed a perfect 10 to tie Boganskaya for first, and you can hear the whistles, which are the equivalent of boos here in Europe. 9.975 was her mark. So after three rotations, Boganskaya, the leader, Silovash is second, Lasheneva is third, Brandy Johnson of the U.S. is in seventh. When you fly... Automobiles here in Stuttgart, there's a Porsche factory as well. Inside, engineers and assembly line workers take great pains to turn out what they consider to be works of art. Sleek, fast, precision driving machines. And if ever there was a time for Brandy Johnson to make her move, it is now here in the floor exercise. She was seventh after three rotations. She would dearly love to become a medalist here at these world championships. This exercise really seems to fit her personality. It's bright, it's determined. Her choreography seems so fresh and spontaneous. Rotates just slightly, but really steps out of it well and covers it up. We talk about Boganskaya being a trendsetter with her choreography. I think that Brandy does an excellent job of relating to the audience and the judges with her dance. In a dual meet with the Soviet Union last year in Columbus, Ohio, Brandy won the all-around title and she won the floor exercise. to wow the judges to get a 10 and while Brandy's exercise was very clean and well choreographed she just doesn't have that exceptional drama that we saw with Boganskaya. Once again the thing that allows Brandy Johnson to score well is her power and her explosive tumbling. This is a full twisting double back piked position 
Minor form break, but done easily. The mark, 9.825. Kathy, a little low? Well, it seems low, but the judges must have seen something we didn't. Svetlana Boganskaya is next in the vault, and it's this simple, a perfect 10, and she is the all-around champion. Once again, this is the Yurchenko vault invented by her teammate, Natalia Yurchenko. Look at the form in the air. That's your winner. Well, she won the gold medal in Seoul, Korea in the Olympic Games, and there it is, another 10 for Svetlana Boganskaya. She is the all-around champion. Hold it, hold it. Round competition is a silver medal. Even a perfect 10 isn't enough. When you talk about heartache, in a little over a year's time, Daniela will have lost the all-around title at the Olympics, at the European Championships, and at the World Championships by the narrowest of margins. You know, and even though she is a tough competitor, you have to ask the question, how can she keep motivated? How can she continue to concentrate when her heart is sinking? It's tough to mentally let go of that disappointment. looks as if she's just giving up you know it shows you just how much performance is linked to emotion you've got to start doubting yourself when you've been in this situation so often and come up short undaunted she gets back up on the beam I think I might have mailed it in considering all the things that have happened to her especially when it comes to all-around titles well I think it'll be interesting to see if she continues in the sport through the next Olympics Low on that landing, the spark is just not there. But you have to give Daniela all the credit in the world for just getting back up in the balance beam and finishing a routine. Mike, this is really very difficult to watch. She's the Olympic champion on beam. And you can see here, she just gives up, knowing before she even started her routine that a perfect 10 wasn't going to be enough to win the gold medal. This is very difficult for her. She's rarely ever short on a dismount like that. And for Daniela, another unhappy ending. But a day of triumph for the Soviet women. Silovash, <laughs> Romania's best gymnast, had her chances today. But it was Svetlana Boganskaya who brings home the gold for the Soviet Union. As a matter of fact, she leads a sweep for the USSR. America's Brandy Johnson finishes seventh, and right now Donna Devarona is with Brandy. Going into the final round of competition, the floor exercise, Brandy Johnson was 151 thousandths of a point out of first place. And of course, your thoughts going into that final round must have been, I better get a 10, huh? I just wanted to hit my routine and the judges would take care of the scoring. My routine, I guess they thought, only came from a 9-9, so they deducted from there. Now, when Brandy mentioned that her routine only was judged from a 9.9, .9, at this level, all of the top routines are judged from a maximum of 10 points. The judges deducted a tenth of a point for what's coming up right here. This first split leap was good. The second leap, right here, frees it. The judges say that she didn't fulfill the requirement of a 180-degree turn of her body during the leap. That's awfully picky. So Svetlana Boganskaya gives the USSR its 11th women's all-around title in the last 13 world championships. And the American women, well, Kathy, a very strong showing here in West Germany. They've had a very successful competition. They made a huge jump in confidence and respect. And as Bart mentioned, the judges are watching very closely. Remember the names, Wendy Bruce, Sandy Woolsey, and Brandy Johnson. They give the United States a solid nucleus to grow from. Art Connor, Kathy Rigby McCoy, Donna Deverona, I'm Mike Danley saying so long from Stuttgart. <laughs>